Right, so hello, welcome back to the channel and Florentino Perez is surely the one responsible for the Saudi Pro League. What, you don't believe me? Well, stay tuned, let me tell you why. And quickly, if you're new here, give a like, a share and subscribe because it helps me out greatly. To paint the picture for you, Florentino Perez is a Madrista through and through. I mean, he was part of the Madrid City Council in 79, then in 86 he became the Secretary General, then in 93 he became the Vice Chair of OCP, and he's just an all-out businessman who does all his business in Madrid, where he's from. And football had never really seen a businessman become a chairman before properly. I mean, Alan Sugar was, of course, the chair of Tottenham. You're fired. But... It wasn't really on the same scale as Florentino Perez at Real Madrid. And he made his presidential election campaign in the year 2000 against Lorenzo Sanz, the current president at that time anyway, who had previously won the 98 and the 2000 Champions League. So Perez was a massive underdog at the time as well. And it looked even up until the election deadlines that Lorenzo Sanz was going to continue to be the president of Real Madrid. I mean, he just won two of the last three Champions Leagues in his few seasons that he was there. And then Perez struck a deal with the devil. Perez said that if he became president of Real Madrid, he guarantees that he would bring Barcelona, their bitter rival, Barcelona's best player, Luis Figo, to the club. I mean, unheard of at the time. Figo was the best player in the world at the time, and that became evident because he won the Ballon d'Or in the year 2000, the year Perez took over as president of Real Madrid. But he was more than that. He was the symbol for Catalonia and Barcelona and the way that they played football. So to snatch him away, it was unbelievably unlikely. Figo wanted to stay at Barcelona. He just wanted a new contract. Even though he signed a new contract the year before, he wanted more money because Real Madrid were offering him a lot more money than Barcelona were at the time. But at the same time, Figo just wanted to be the highest paid player in Barcelona and he just wanted reassurances. He just wanted to have that settled sort of lifestyle that a player of his caliber really should have had at the time. But Barcelona refused to give him what he wanted, which in all in all was pretty fair at the time. And he signed with Real Madrid and the newly acquired president of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez, had his first of his many Galacticos. Now there hadn't been a strategy like the Galacticos ever in the history of football. I mean, the strategy was clear. Bring in the best players from the best clubs to make a super team. It was like the Avengers before the Avengers even happened. Avengers! Huh? That's what Perez promised. That's how he got the presidency. And he delivered. I mean, the strategy for Perez was clear. Go to the end of the game and use all the cheats. Don't actually go through the tutorial and work your way up and really feel like you've earned something there. Go buy the best players in the world, give them a lot of money and make a super team. And that's exactly what he did a year after when he bought Zinedine Zidane in 2001. The year after that, he bought Brazilian Ronaldo in 2002. The year after that, he bought David Beckham from Man United in 2003. The year after that, he bought Michael Owen, Liverpool's best player and a former Ballon d'Or winner as well in 2004. The year after that, he brought the Brazilian wonder kid Robinho. I mean, he just was a machine and a monster. And look, the first year or two of the Galacticos, it looked to be going all right because they won the 2001 Champions League, who could forget that Zidane volley at Hamden Park. But at the same time, they might have bought the best players in the world, but it wasn't quite working out as well as what people remembered. And because of that, and because they were obsessed with La Decima winning the 10th Champions League trophy, and it just wasn't coming at all, they weren't getting close to it, he gave a new strategy in 2009. Now his second election came in 2009 where he switched up his strategy because he went for Kaka. He went for Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema and Xavi Alonso. He had enough of just buying one player at a time. He went even more all in and just bought a bunch of fantastic, wonderful players, some up and coming, some already well established and just said, hey, 
we're going to win La Decima. And again, he went back into his old habits. In 2010, he got Jose Mourinho after winning a treble with Inter Milan. Then he also got Ozil, Di Maria. 2013, he brought in Gareth Bale. They finally won La Decima. Then he brings in Tony Cruz, James Rodriguez, Keylor Navas. He just cheated the system. And look, you can say what you want about Perez, but Real Madrid have always been obsessed with the Champions League. And in his now 23rd season at the club, they've won six Champions Leagues, which is unbelievable. I mean, they've won the most in the history of the competition, and they're winning it by a country mile. But because of the way he's actually ran the club, and the way that he's just bullied the transfer market, bringing in a lot of money into the club, just saying, no negotiations needed, here's a lot of money. Shut up and take my money. Has that actually helped football or made it for the worse? Let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Because Saudi Arabia, they're copying his blueprint. I mean, they are going for the best players in Europe and in the world, it just so happens to be a lot of the best players are in Europe. And they are just offering them unbelievable amounts of money you know yes i talked about that in my last video the mbappe video go check that out do it but at the exact same time it's really not good for the sport of football as a whole but it's not just saudi arabia you can see the likes of man city psg and now newcastle coming into this equation as well have really sort of seen how it's been done and Man City clearly being the best example of it, being the recent Champions League winners, they are fully exploiting this. And yes, there's some financial fair play issues with those two clubs and Newcastle are being a bit smarter because they've seen what Real Madrid did, then they see what Man City and PSG did, and they're just waiting for their time to build their team. But it's not healthy and it's really killing the competition. And say what you want about footballers, but at the end of the day, their careers are short in terms of careers that everyone have. And yes, they earn so much money anyway, but at the same time, they're trying to set up their families, family, family. So they're going to go and play for as much money as they possibly can. Some won't. Some will have some morals and say, no, I want to play for this club and this is the only club for me. But that's not everyone. And the reality is that a lot of players... They just play for financial stability. And look, Perez as well, he tried to set up the Super League. That was his idea ultimately. And that was also a killing football decision. Take all the best clubs in Europe and just put them all in one league and forget about the other clubs with no relegation and no promotion. Like, just in a one league. No, it doesn't work like that at all. And the only possible corporation that could stop these teams buying these players, putting them on massive wages, whether that is at Man City, PSG, Newcastle, Saudi Arabia, Real Madrid, it's FIFA. And I don't know exactly how they would do it because it's very hard to get into a rhythm and really set boundaries when there's never been boundaries set like that before. They might have to look at the NBA, maybe the NFL, set a salary cap for teams saying, look, you can't go over that because if so, there's a luxury tax and who really knows? But they're going to have to step in soon because no matter what you think of Perez, yes, he's been extremely successful at his time at Real Madrid. But overall, as a butterfly effect from what he's done, he's created the Saudi League inadvertently, created Man City's takeover, <laughs> PSG's takeover and Newcastle's takeover. And he is inadvertently killing the competition so thank you for watching the video make sure you give it a like subscribe and share it around it's free it costs you nothing at all do you think that it is perez's fault or do you think i've been a little bit too harsh on him let me know what you think in the comments below thank you so much for watching cheers